This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Next up, we've got a case-based debate uh, titled, Should I Save This Foot? Yes, so I want to invite Dr. Dane Wukic um, to the podium here. What we're going to do with this case is um, I'm going to present a case that we had over last year, and Dr. Wukic and I, and I'll ask some questions, we'll try to go over uh, the thought process behind evaluating this foot surgically in terms of uh, amputation, what level amputation, and what is the thought process behind choosing an appropriate amputation and whether this patient should have a major or a minor amputation. Uh, this is a 76-year-old male that presented to our, to our clinic uh, with diabetes mellitus, end-stage renal disease on, on hemodialysis. He underwent an amputation of his uh, left second toe due to an infection. And, um, and then he, one week later, he presented with uh, the following picture. He, he was, at this point, he was home. He was discharged from the hospital. He was sent home on home health care with an open wound at the second toe amputation site. And a home health care nurse Called, called our office, our clinic, and said, there's something wrong with this patient. He needs to be seen. So I guess um, my question, my first question would be, um, Dr. Vukic, how would you approach this patient, and what are your thoughts? Do you have an x-ray, Alex? Uh, you know, I don't have an x-ray for this patient, but uh, he did not have gas in the x-ray, and there was no evidence of osteomyelitis. Uh, he did have... Uh, uh, a mild white count of about 13,000, and he had cellulitis in his arch, uh, and he was uh, slightly febrile. Well, when I look at this, I, I, certainly this is something that needs to go to the OR ASAP, and I would probably approach this almost like a stage fashion. I know that I'm going to do something definitively at this the middle of the night, I mean, at middle of the night, and then come back at some point. I would probably do this almost like a second ray resection and resect the necrotic tissue and see what kind of bleeding I had and um, get the infection in the middle of the night and take care of that urgently and then see how he demarcates afterwards. That's exactly what we did. We took this patient immediately for a surgical incision and drainage procedure. Um, there was a significant amount of pus uh, traveling along the flexor tendon. We did resect the second metatarsal and at the same time while the patient was in-house he underwent a vascular workup, found to have some critical limb ischemia and uh, was scheduled for, um, after getting an angiogram, he was subsequently scheduled for a bypass. Um, this is what the foot looks like just prior to the lower extremity bypass. Uh, as you can see, there's a significant amount of necrosis, desiccation of the wound, and um, he underwent a superficial femoral to uh, posterior tibial bypass with saphenous vein graft, and again, a concurrent IND at this point. So my next question is, um, is this foot salvageable? I mean, it's, it's a tough question, but looking at it, that toe, is that the fourth toe? Is, it, is that ischemic or is that just the picture? Is it a little it, bit? It low? looks like it's becoming cyanotic, yes. You know, I, I would say that I would give it a try. I mean, your, your deep tissues actually, they don't look grossly infected. They look well, it looks red to me, and I probably would try and salvage this. If you've, you probably have used negative pressure wound therapy, I'm thinking, and. And with your ray being gone, you could even try a delayed primary closure and, and give it a chance. If that fails, then, then it fails. But I, I would probably give it a chance. Right. Okay. So we went ahead and converted this patient to transmetatarsal amputation because the fourth toe was dying, and we did not want to leave the first and fifth toe. So we converted this patient to a transmetatarsal amputation and went on to do a delayed primary closure. On, uh, you can see this is 523.14. 
Um, he went home, again, a home health care. Uh, he was fairly compliant individual. We tried to offload him and keep him non-weight bearing as much as we can. He subsequently uh, underwent a sustained occlusion of his bypass graft. And on August 8, 2014, underwent angioplasty of the fem posterior tibial bypass graft, uh, which was successful. And this is what his foot looked like at that time. I think this guy's telling you something. I, I just, looking at that, and I mean, I'm surprised because your initial post, when you closed the wound, it looked good. And he's, he's just demarcating again. And uh, this is your TMA site. I, and I've never been a, been a fan of the SIME amputation, although some people would go back and remove the ankle joint. I, I think probably this guy is going to end up with a definitive major amputation, hopefully at the below knee level. What do you think of Chopard's amputation? I used to be very negative against Chopard amputations because they get a tremendous equinus deformity. Um, so when I do them now, I have done a few where, and the Chopard is a transverse tarsal joint right at the uh, talonavicular and the calcuneal cuboid joint. I, I now, I'll completely cut the Achilles tendon if I do one, recognizing that if I get it to heal and they develop a bad equinus, I could reconstruct them later and go back and fuse the ankle and the subtalar joint. So. I'm not opposed to them completely. Um, I don't know how functional they are. I, the theory would be that you don't need a prosthesis at, at nighttime to walk around. Um, but traditionally, they're not something seen of very favorably, but I've done a few. Uh, but the question to me is, show parts joints are very close to where you are now. If this is demarcating here at the transmetatarsal amputate, three centimeters more proximal, are you going to get it to heal? And that's, it. that's the question. Right. This, was, uh, this patient underwent about five or six procedures in the foot alone. Um, the story, the, the, the bigger picture for him was about 10 years ago, he had the same problem in his other side, contralateral limb, also underwent a lower extremity bypass, and um, eventually we were able to salvage him at the show parts joint. And 10 years later, he still retained his show parts amputation on the contralateral limb. So he had some... Uh, history and understood what was going on, and he kept on telling us, "No, we want to. We want you to save this foot." And you know, the the one thing that seems to me that of all the things that you've presented here, as his worst predictor of how he does, in, is he's on is he's on dialysis. Correct. And so, dialysis patients are just it's the perfect storm, and that they just are terrible, terrible patients as far as healing. So especially if you have a heel wound. This is not a heel wound, but I, I see heel wounds from people laying in dialysis three to four times a week, and uh, they're really difficult to treat. Right. Completely agree. That's exactly what we thought. You know, at this point, we were almost uh, giving up because we've done this four, five, six times, and uh, uh, he's on dialysis, as you mentioned, but because his family and him wanted to try to do everything possible, we continued to whittle away, if you will, uh, debride it, do local wound care, and eventually uh, we were able to get uh, proximal enough where uh, we salvaged him as well as show parts. But this, this could have gone uh, very easily to a below the knee amputation, and I think if he wasn't so adamant about it and pushed us so far, we probably would have just gave, gave up. Any questions uh, from the audience uh, regarding foot amputations? type of amputations? Well, the one comment I'll make is, I think sometimes we, we get caught up in, we, we think we save the foot and people take um, two rays and they'll take the big toe. And, and, and sometimes when you take the, the first ray, the transfer lesions are so great. And, and so I think when you saw that you had two or more rays there and you decided to do the transmetatarsal amputation, I think that's the right thing to do because we get caught up in saving two or three toes and end up having a dysfunctional foot. The, the key is function, and I don't think we preserve function. I agree. Once we go more than two, we, we typically go on to a transmetatarsal amputation. Joe, you have a question? So uh, what about a free flap for this guy? Free flap? Yeah. Dane, what do you think of your free Ooh, flap history? I have some aggressive plastic surgeons that I work with, and I think... Um, the, 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 this guy, I think, is, is probably a difficult candidate. Can he tolerate that many hours of surgery to do that? That's number one. He's a sick person. And number two, do they have good target vessels distally? I mean, they're, they're magnificent technicians, but I'm not sure my plastic surgeons would tackle that. 
Um, we have pretty aggressive plastic surgeons as well, and um, we will have a case uh, in our after early afternoon session that specifically target talks about the free flap as well. Okay. Next question, please. Yes. Okay. Can, uh, can I bring up one other question before you do that? Sure. How about hyperbaric oxygen? Did, you know, that's oh. that's I could that's Pandora's box here. <laughs> right. But right. if there was ever a case for hyperbaric oxygen, was this guy a candidate, Alex? Uh, wow. Well, well, I can tell you that we don't have hyperbaric chamber at UCSF, so uh, it's a moot point. But would he be a candidate? I think that in any other center, they would probably send him hyperbaric and and anything would have been an option at this point. Any adjunctive therapy would have been uh, chosen in, in this case. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, first, just a quick comment, because you just mentioned that. Um, you know, I also, I work at a wound care center that doesn't have hyperbaric chambers, but there, um, I don't know about San Francisco, but there are uh, standalone hyperbaric chambers that uh, we'll be happy to take uh, the patient as a referral just to consider in the future. But. Um, the question I have is, as a vascular surgeon, I'm often called upon to do these amputations, and I'm, you know, obviously I'm not a podiatrist, and I didn't get really any formal training in the um, podiatry of these things. And so for me, it's just a very you know, simple technical thing. I, I go in and I remove the dead tissue and the bone and I close it up. But there's a lot of functional aspects that you've already mentioned. So my question is, can you give, like, uh, dumb down for a vascular surgeon, the rules of thumb for what amputations are going to work functionally and what aren't, you know, especially when you end up taking, you know, toe one, three, five, and you, you leave like this U prong or something. I mean, that's ridiculous, but you understand what I'm saying. Yes. Well, I, toe amputations do well. You can take multiple toes. Um, if you take the second toe, the big toe is going to develop a severe hallux valgus, which might be a problem. Um, it's when you start to take metatarsals that become a problem. And, and in general, the rules traditionally were that if you took the first metatarsal, you should consider a transmetatarsal amputation. If you take two or more rays, which is a, metatar a metatarsal, then you should consider that. When you get to the midfoot, you've also got to think of tendon balancing. And Achilles tendon lengthening becomes important because they get the equinus that Alex talked about. Above the midfoot, when you get to the transverse tarsal joints, they get a severe equinus. And then the question, that becomes a problem. And then should you preserve the ankle? I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I think a well-done baloney amputation, which I'm going to talk about this afternoon, is actually a very good operation. And sometimes I think the definition of limb salvage, if you look at the literature, it's preservation of the ankle joint, the calcaneus, and the um, talus. Sometimes that's not very functional. And I think we, we get caught up in trying to save the foot, and we lose function. But that's, that's in a nutshell. My, my, my addition to to Dane's comments are that transmetatarsal amputation is a very functional amputation. However, there are some subtleties to it as well. And uh, if you can do a distal transmetatarsal amputation, it is much more functional than a proximal transmetatarsal amputation due to the tendon balancing problem. Because the more proximal you go, the more equinovarus the foot gets into. In other words, it gets equinus, plantar flexion contracture, but it also goes into a varus in a frontal plane. And then the problem is re ulcerations in the distal lateral aspect of the TMA. And the first ray is the most important ray. If you lose the fifth, the second, third, or fourth uh, individually, the patients can do very well. But if you lose the first, all the toes, lesser toes, start to contract. Metatarsal heads start to get increased peak plantar pressures, and then they have a lot of reulceration problems. So the first ray is key, and then transmetatarsal, distal transmetatarsal amputation is much more functional. I think yes. you've done great on this particular patient required multiple procedures. And the only problem, as it shows in the last slide, is those last three letters, SNF. The patient's going to the skilled nursing facility. What's your recommendation for foot protection and offloading when they're going to the skilled nursing facility after that kind of an amputation? That kind of an amputation, I'll, I'll start first. That kind of amputation is a very proximal amputation. That is a very difficult amputation to, um, to keep from, contract, from plantar flexion contracture. If it's a TMA, you know, we tend to put them in a multipotus boot or ankle contracture splint, try to keep the foot at 90 degrees as much as we can, and we try to do that with every patient. Uh, we also try to do multipotus boots in order to prevent decubiti in the heels, which we frequently see, as Dane mentioned. 
But the only, I think the best so far that I've seen is just a, a good multi-potus boot. Uh, I'm very careful and cautious with posterior splints that are made out of uh, plaster of Paris because I think those are uh, problems waiting to happen. So I try to avoid those. Okay. I agree with that. The only thing I would consider a, a total contact cast, even though it's not the whole foot. It's very well padded. Um, it's rigid. It helps with edema. And so uh, I, I think that would be the only other thing that I would consider. I, my biggest concern in this guy rehabilitation is his heels. Laying in bed, he, if he gets a heel ulcer, dialysis patient, PAD, disaster. Right. That's a great point. Total contact cast. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you back at 1 o'clock.